What's up, everyone? It's Fuzzy. Welcome back to yet another MLB recap. We have a lot to talk about today. The Yankees had a choke job of epic proportions. Tempers flared in the Astros and Mariners game. Prime Cody Bellinger is back, and he clutched up for the Cubs yet again. I don't know what he was doing at third base, but I thought that was funny. Ronald, he hosed someone from deep right field, and multiple teams scored 15-plus runs, so today is going to be a crazy recap. Remember, everyone, if you're going to any baseball games, concerts, anything like that anytime soon, use code Fuzzy on Seeky to save yourself 20 bucks off your entire order and also thank you guys for being patient with me as I was on vacation I had a lot of fun but I'm ready to go the recaps are back now because I did miss a few games I did want to show a few key highlights that I missed so Bryce Harper hit his first home run of the year and he did it without batting gloves so every single at bat before that was with batting gloves he made a change and then he goes yard so we'll see if he sticks with that Fernando Tatis Jr. and Anthony Santander they both had huge two homer games so of course I go away and then Fernando Tatis Jr. absolutely tees off and the Mariners they scored seven with two outs to make an epic comeback versus the Houston Astros one of the craziest games not only of this year but one of the craziest games I've seen in quite some time so a few big things I missed of course all right let's go ahead and get into the games from Sunday we have the Braves and the Orioles Matt Olson he connected on his 10th home run of the year but that was it for the Braves as Tyler Wells of the Orioles he was pretty good he kept Atlanta in check and Braves rookie Bryce Elder he did the same thing against the Orioles so he basically matched Tyler Wells pitch for pitch both went five, allowing just one earned run over five. And when both starters came out the game, the bullpens absolutely started shredding each other apart. Each bullpen allowed just one, one hit over the next five innings. They were absolutely incredible. The score was tied going into the 11th when Baltimore, they were threatening. They got a runner to third. No, they did not. Wait, he's out. Look at that seed from Ronald Acuna Jr. in deep right field. According to baseball savant, Ronald has the strongest arm in the outfield to begin 2023. And then the 2022 NL Rookie of the Year, he stepped in and he walked it off. Michael Harris the second. There he is. The Braves, they are 24 and 11. To me, they look like the team to beat in the National League. They are so good at pretty much everything. The Yankees and the Tampa Bay Rays, one of the biggest series of the season so far. And in my opinion, even though the Yankees played fairly well in this series, this has to be their worst loss of the last few years. And I'm including playoff losses because at least their playoff losses, they made it. But this one right here, ooh, Harrison Bader. Yes, he hit another home run, making it two home runs and seven RBIs in his first five games. Garrett Cole was given a six-run lead to work with, so honestly, 99 times out of 100, if Garrett Cole is given a six-run lead going into the fifth and sixth inning, you think that there's a 0% chance that the other team comes back to win, but Tampa Bay, they're just like flies or gnats at a picnic. They never go away. They're annoying. Jose Siri, he got the Rays on the board with his third home run. More on Siri in just a second. Isaac Paredes, he belted an RBI double to bring it to a three-run game, and there's about the most unlikely home run I've seen in quite some time. Christian Christian Bethencourt, he nearly sent one 420 feet for a game-tying three-run home run. So the game stayed tied until the ninth inning. But Tampa Bay, they couldn't score. So this one's going to have to go to extras. And Isaac Paredes, he walked it off. The Tampa Bay Rays have now improved to 21 games over 500. They have outscored opponents by 115 runs this year. The Yankees are two and a half games back of fourth place. They're still 18 and 17, which is decent, I guess, in my opinion. But uh, yeah, they're going to be okay. It's just being in last place kind of sucks. We have yet another extra inning mess to talk about and this one was down in Wrigley. We had the Marlins and the Cubs facing off and if you're a Marlins fan, I'm very sorry that you have to relive this game. Yuli Gurriel, he's having a pretty decent start to the season. That's his third home run of the year and Jorge Soler, his eighth inning single gave Sandy Alcantara a two-run cushion and Sandy went on to throw another scoreless inning in the eighth. So eight scoreless innings for the reigning Cy Young winner. The meat of Chicago's order was coming up in the ninth so it was not going to be easy and there's Prime Belly again. So that was an RBI double. He got to third base on the throw. And again, I don't know what emote that was. Maybe he dropped his controller and then just emote started just playing. Bellinger, he's playing happy and that makes me happy. Cody then scored on an RBI single from Eric Hosmer. So Sandy, not only did his complete game shutout get taken away, but his chance at a W as well. Both teams, they traded runs deep into extras. This one needed 14 innings. Miami, they got the go ahead yet again. And even though Adbert Alzole threw three innings of one hit baseball, he takes the tough L as Andrew Nar he saved it in the 14th inning. That sounds like a name straight out of Guardians of the Galaxy. Andrew Nardi, his first career save, good for him. The Dodgers and the Padres, not a great start for Julio Urias of the Dodgers as Manny Machado and Xander Bogarts, they started a little rally in the first inning and it's quickly two to nothing, but things did slow down from there as both teams were held in check for the next hour or so. Joe Musgrove, he threw five shutout. He actually had a no hitter through the first four innings and then the announcer, I think his name is Carl something. Yeah, he brought the no hitter. He gives up the 
base hit. I mean, it was easily his best start of the year. He was taken out after just 81 pitches because he's coming back after he had a few shaky starts coming off the IL. He's still kind of trying to build up that arm. So after Joe was taken out, LA, they were able to capitalize on a, but I mean, I think that Juan Soto should have caught that. It was in and out of the glove. We know that Juan Soto is not the best defender. Freddie, he scores on an RBI double from Will Smith and we head to the ninth inning. The Padres are up by one. You have Josh Hader versus Mookie Betts, Goliath versus Goliath, and Goliath won, aka Mookie Betts. He launched a 96 fastball, nearly 400 feet to tie it. That home run sends this to extras with the Dodgers. They grab their first lead of the day on a Michael Bush single, and then there's the kid again. This James Outman guy, he really reminds me of Grady Sizemore. Outman has eight home runs, four stolen bases, and two outs above average already in the outfield. Evan Phillips, he had an easy 10th inning, setting down the Padres in order for his fifth save. The Dodgers are 8-2 over the last 10. They're now one and a half games ahead for first place in their division. The Red Sox and the Phillies, Kyle Schwarber and Taiwan Walker really took this game over versus the Red Sox. Schwarber had an RBI in the fourth and a moonshot later. We'll show that after we talk about Taiwan Walker, who finally did not give up five or six runs in a start. He had six strikeouts over six innings, allowing just one earned run, did not walk anyone. Schwarber, he's doing Schwarber things in 2023. He has eight home runs, but he's hitting 188 with absolutely horrific defense. So again, Schwarber, he's really just good at hitting home runs and everything else, not the best at. JT Romuto, he singled in two more. As starter, Matt Strom, he seems to be the ultimate Swiss Army knife. He started, I think, six or seven times already this year, but there he is in the final innings. He threw two scoreless relief innings with three strikeouts. That is a two inning save. The Phillies beat the surging Red Sox six to one. The Blue Jays and the Pirates, Whip Merrifield finally got into the home run column with his first of the year. That three run shot came off of Roan's knee. Contreras, Pittsburgh, they're really trying to avoid losing their seventh in a row. It's just uh, Yusei Kikuchi is also on a mission to prove the doubters wrong. He almost went seven shutout. The Jays, I guess, wanted to embarrass the Pirates even further. Varsho has five home runs and six stolen bases while playing great defense. And speaking of great defense, we know that Kevin Kiermaier is one of the best defenders ever. There he is with the two run home run. He very quietly has a 117 OPS plus. I can't believe I'm saying this, but the first place Pirates have now lost seven games in a row. Now, luckily for the Pirates, the second place team in that division, the Brewers, they've also been losing a lot as well. They are currently on a six game losing streak. Let's see if they can get a desperate W. William Contreras, he delivered with a two run home run, his second of the year. He's hitting 290 with a 373 on base percentage and his defense has been vastly improved as well. San Francisco, they tied it off of Adrian Hauser, but Willie Adamas, he had his pitchers back. His sack fly in the third broke the tie and then his fifth inning home run extended the lead. Christian Yellow drove home an RBI and it's just crazy to admit that he's literally an afterthought in the game of baseball in the year 2023. I don't hear anything about Yelich ever. He does have 14 RBIs and six stolen bases, which is cool, but he has an 89 OPS plus, which is 11% worse than league average. Anyways, Adamas, he joins the 20 RBI club right there as Milwaukee, they do end their streak. So that means they gained a game on the Pirates and it seems inevitable that the Pirates, I mean, I really applaud their efforts the way that they started the season, but I don't see them as a playoff team. I mean, I hope that they are, because that would be a fantastic Cinderella story, but the Brewers, they're infinitely better. The Rockies and the Mets, this one started off fun with both teams kind of trading jabs, jabs, jabs. Gritchick went 426 feet in New York, so it's not Coors Field. You know that ball was absolutely tattooed. Jerks and Profar and Chris Bryant, they got the Rockies back into it after New York. They scored three to take the lead, and yet again, the Rockies lost the lead in the fourth. KB, though, he came in clutch with his fifth home run of the year. That two-run shot started an avalanche of scoring with Ezekiel Tovar and catcher Austin wins, making it an eight spot on the day. And then there's double digit scoring. Rookie Brenton Doyle, he has been a speed demon on the bases. Five stolen bases already with great defense and center field. He finally showed off the pop in the batter's box, his first home run of his career. The Rockies embarrassed the Mets in their own home, sending New York to 17 and 18. So they're a game under 500. They got beat by the Tigers in a series and then a second consecutive series loss to a bad team. Yeah, it's not a great time to be a Mets fan right now, but in my opinion, they'll be okay. This game really felt like Chicago released all of their pent up emotions from the last two seasons. I'm talking about when your mean Mercedes got benched by Tony La Russa. Tony La Russa and his terrible tenure as the White Sox manager, Luis Robert getting benched, all that bad stuff. They left nothing on the table. They bludgeoned the Reds, nearly putting up 20 runs, a 20 spot. Hanser Alberto, he started it with a two run blast as Ben Attendee and Andrew Vaughn. They had some big RBI extra base hits as well. I don't even really know how to recap something like this because so many hitters got in on the action. Six 
six different White Sox hitters had two or more RBIs. Gavin Sheets hit a long, prodigious home run to make it 11 to one. And again, I can't show every single highlight, but man, the White Sox, they did not hold back. Andrew Vaughn and Hanser Alberto, they led the way. They both had four RBIs. The White Sox, they're 12 and 23. I don't know what is in their future, but at least they're, you know, they throw up a few good games every so often. Luis Robert, same thing. I mean, that guy honestly is one of the most talented players in baseball, and I wish that he could be more consistent. Do our eyes deceive us? Is that Anthony Rendon hitting a ball in the air? That three run home run was his first home run of 2023. Now he is hitting 291 on the season. So there are some signs of improvement. And if the power continues to get better and better, watch out the Angels offense is gonna be even more dangerous. Just uh, Jose Suarez, he tried way too hard in this one. The Halo starting pitcher gave up a two run moonshot to rookie Ezekiel Duran, who's hitting basically 220 with four home runs. It got ugly from there because Leody Tavares had a two RBI single to make it five runs. And there are runs six and seven, both off the bat of Josh Smith, his second of the year. Jose Suarez said that he was in pain pretty much the entire start, but he tried to tough it out. You can't do that in the big leagues. Like, tip of the cap, trying to be tough, whatever. But seven earned runs, you really cost your team a chance at a victory because Martin Perez, he stunk. I mean, this guy's usually pretty good, but the Angels tagged him for, what, eight runs or seven earned runs? I don't know what it was, but Martin Perez also was terrible. Luckily, his team scored 12, so he still gets the W. Tavares had another two RBI double, and Texas popped off for five more in the seventh with Adolis Garcia, his three-run home run sealing a 16-run day. Adolis has nine home runs and 36 RBIs, and he's walking more. So the Rangers, they win 16-8. to eight. What a terrible game from Jose Suarez. Again, I respect and kind of tip my cap for his strength, but don't do that. That's stupid. The Twins and the Guardians, a very easy game to recap. It might take me 25, 30 seconds. J-Ram, he brought home Stephen Kwan and Josh Bell. He knocked in the game's final run. Yes, in the first inning, every single run was scored right there. That's because Joe Ryan of Minnesota, he settled down from there. And Cal Quantrill, he was basically unhittable. He was on top of his game, taking a no-hitter into the seventh inning. Unfortunately, though, it does get broken up, but he didn't let that phase him. He had one hit with four strikeouts over seven shutout innings. Karen Jack, thank goodness he did not implode for once, and he gave it to Emmanuel Classe in the ninth inning, where we finally saw Classe throwing 100 multiple times again. That is very encouraging as the Guardians take a big-time series win against the Twins. Another big series is coming up versus the Tigers, which I can't believe I'm even saying that. Speaking of the Tigers, let's see if they can complete back-to-back -back series sweeps. They swept the Mets, and they're looking for their sixth consecutive W in a row. Uh, well, that's not a great start for the Tigers. Goldie goes 433 feet for his fifth home run of the year, but he was just getting started. There's his second home run of the day, and from there, he's going to need his teammates to really step up as Jake Rogers' sixth inning grand slam flipped the script on this one. By the way, Jake Rogers has 10 home runs and a near 120 OPS plus dating back to last year. I'm thinking a lot of teams are going to try and acquire him at the deadline considering he is a free agent after 2023. Again, Goldie, he's going to need some help though. He got it from Brendan Donovan. I haven't really said Brendan Donovan's name much over the last few weeks, so that was a positive sign right there. That three-run missile opened the floodgates as catcher Andrew Kisner doubled in Carlson. Newbar drove home two more and Goldie, he completed an epic performance with his third home run of the afternoon. He's hitting 321 with seven home runs and four stolen bases while leading the National League in doubles because of course he is. He's Paul Goldschmidt. The Cardinals, they went easy, but I do want to talk about Andrew Kisner. He doubled in Dylan Carlson. He was the catcher yesterday for the Cardinals. Wilson Contreras, their new shiny free agent, he is the DH. He has been relieved of catcher duties. I don't know if he's just calling a bad game behind the dish and his pitchers don't trust him. Maybe it's the pass balls. I don't know what it is, but Wilson Contreras is out as the Cardinals catcher. The Royals and the A's, I feel so bad for this Mason Miller kid. Yeah, he gave up a tank. And when I say tank, I mean, that ball was hit 462 feet. Goodness gracious, Salvi. But like Mason Miller, he was not bad at all. The A's rookie got one run of support on an infield single, but because Mason allowed two runs to score, that was pretty much all she wrote because Ryan Yarbrough, before he had to get taken out after he got hit by a comebacker, I hope that he's okay. Prayers out to him and his family. He went five and two thirds and secured his first W of the season. Kansas City, they stacked on a few more runs with a two RBI double from Nick Prado. I love Nick Prado. He's going to be so good. And the Royals went fairly easy, even though it was only a five to one ball game. I just thought that was not even close from the jump. What's funny though is the second I leave this chair and the second I stop making recaps for a few days, the Oakland Athletics win some ball games and they end their starting pitcher losing streak. And not only did they end it, they got two starting pitcher wins the two days that I missed. And then the day that I get back, they get smoked by a bad team in the Royals. Like, 
Am I bad luck for the A's? Seattle and Houston, the Mariners had a tough matchup against their division rival, again, the Astros. But J-Rod and company, they were up for the task. J-Rod almost hit a baseball 460 feet. He's only hitting 216, but he does have six home runs, six stolen bases, and three outs above average. So even when he's struggling to make contact, he's still making up for it on the bases and in center field with his defense. Rookie Bryce Miller, he looked sharp again. And because of that three-run lead, he was able to cruise through six scoreless innings. He also had five strikeouts on just 85 five pitches through six innings, but they took him out. Maybe that's because Robbie Ray went down with an injury. So again, they're trying to keep their young guys healthy. His spin rate on his fastball is the best in baseball. So that pitch is devastating. Now there was some tempers flaring later on in this game, but it didn't really mean much. It wasn't able to rally the troops. If you're talking about the Astros, it wasn't really anything. So yeah, just want to show that real quick. Justin Topa or Tapa, who I just learned existed. Sorry if I botched his name. He came in for his first ever save opportunity and he got the job done. The Mariners are back to 500. They're 17 and 17, and they're three and a half games back in first place. We have a really fun game between the Nationals and the Diamondbacks. Lourdes Gurriel Jr. easily had his best game as a Diamondback, belting two home runs, one in the second, and then a huge three run shot in the fifth inning. You know who else had a big game though? Joey Manessis of the Nationals. His RBI single in the fifth inning was his first RBI, but he ended up with four RBIs on the day after his three run home run in the ninth, saved Washington from taking a hard fought loss. Joey's power has definitely dipped and declined since we saw him pop off for 13 home runs in his first 56 games last year and then in the WBC. So that's gotta be huge for his confidence going forward. Like he's still been decent, but he has not been the Joey Manessis that we saw his first few months in professional baseball. Hunter Harvey, he came in for the save and he closed it out for his first of the season. Real quick before we show off the web gems, I do wanna update you guys on all of the war leaders in baseball and also the standings. I wanna give an update on that just super quick. If we're talking about the best player in baseball according to fan graphs and their war because that's what Major League Baseball uses as well, F war, Sean Murphy has been worth 2.1 F4 already. And then the top 10, we have Zach Gallen, Ronald Acuna Jr., Matt Chapman, Wander Franco, Jonah Heim is having himself a monster season, Shohei Otani, Paul Goldschmidt, and Tyro Estrada. My goodness. Then you have a bunch of guys tied at 1.7 war with Outman, Bogarts, a couple other guys. Nathan Avaldi, shout out to him. He has been incredible in back-to-back -back starts. And Cody Bellinger with the bounce back season. Shout out to all these guys because across the leaderboards, honestly, we're seeing some of the best beginnings to seasons that we've seen in quite some time. Same thing can be said for the Tampa Bay Rays. They're 28 and seven. They're eight and two over their last 10. They're five and a half games ahead of the 22 and 12 Orioles in that AL East. The Twins, again, they lost two in a row to the Guardians. So the Guardians take that series. They are down by two and a half games. The Rangers are leading the Angels now by two games after the Rangers put the Angels in a body bag the last series. In the National League, the Braves are up by seven games. The Mets and the Marlins are tied for second place with the Phillies struggling as of late. The Pirates, speaking of struggling as of late, they've lost seven in a row. They're just a half game ahead of the Brewers. I expect the Brewers to take first place and the Cardinals still at 11 and 24. And last but not least, like we just mentioned, the Diamondbacks, they're trying their best to hold on for dear life. But even though the Padres have lost two in a row, I still think they are are looking better as of late. Their pitching has looked better. And the Dodgers, I mean, they're cruising right now. Eight and two over their last 10. They have outscored opponents by 43 runs, which is by far the best in this entire division. Again, we're going to show the web gems in just a second, but thank you guys for watching until the end if you did. Sorry for not posting over the last few days, but I'm taking a break every so often. So I appreciate your patience. All the comments saying, Fuzzy, I can't keep up with baseball without your recaps. I appreciate those comments more than you can possibly imagine. They make my day. They make me smile, not to be cheesy, but thank you guys for all the support. And I just really appreciate all that you do enjoy the gems Zavala to deep right center this ball is definitely out of the ballpark and Will Myers goes over the wall and put Correa nice pickup throws him out diving to his left and getting the speedy Jimenez for out number two he'll drive that one the other way a dive by Tapia and I too because if that gets by him that's a run. Turner so fast. Man, Bryce Harper. I mean, he can break. Payoff pitch, and this one is on the ground. Flagged by Duran. He'll go to second, and they get the lead out. What a play. This is out to right field. Kalnick charging. Kalnick diving. Kalnick making the catch. Call again. Abrams lifts it out to right. Here comes Paven Smith. Smith is at third. He's coming home. Here's the throw, and they. 